Okay, so let's look at questions 34 and 35. Again, it looks like it's going to be about biology, talking about dinosaurs and mammals and so on, but really it's, it's, it's about physics. So they introduce a new idea that you've probably never heard of, relative stride length and fluid number. And um, they give uh, gravity is 10 meters per second squared. As you may know, it's actually 9.8. But um, more often than not, you're going to use 10. And frankly, even if they tell you gravity is 9.8 meters per second, before you even think of using it, look at the answers. If the answers are far enough apart, then you use 10. So even if they tell you 9.8, you use 10 because you have to estimate. And they know that sometimes you just have to estimate. OK, so looking at the graph, figure 1, uh, so they have a line of best fit. So it's sort of a re regression curve is the expression used. Um, so the, uh, the line of best fit. And well, just, just for interest, when you look at that figure 1, um, I'm just going to ask you a question, which is a type of question that they can ask. Would you say that the result for kangaroo is uh, higher, lower, or exactly as predicted by the regression curve? So this is a type of question that they can ask. Is um, the experimental result for kangaroo higher, lower, or exactly as predicted uh, by the regression curve. Any any thoughts about that? Looking at figure one. So you know you you look at kangaroo, which are the triangles. You look at the curve, which is the black line, and are the are the triangles above the curve or below the curve? And as mo most of you suggested, it's above the curve. So that means the experimental result is higher than what would be predicted by the regression curve. The regression curve predicted that the result should be lower. OK, anyway, that's, <laughs> I just want to give you that because those are the types of questions that come up uh, you know, relatively frequently in, in biology more so. So anyway, so then uh, they give you some more information about the food number. They tell you about 2.5 being the number where ferret changes uh, from trotting to galloping. I never knew that ferrets could gallop and trot. But uh, I'm sure horses can do it. Why not have them mammals? So and then uh, there's a note section. And the note is written in bold. So a couple of things to, for you to note. One is that whenever you do see note um, in any of the passages, highly likely that one of the answer choices is going to be dependent on the fact that you did note that. So pay special attention to when they say note. The other thing I want to mention is that there's a lot of information in this passage. And when you're nervous and you're trying to get through as many questions as you can, and you go through a long passage like this, there's only two questions, your concentration level might not be ideal. So when you look at the first question, um, be aware of a couple of things. One, they gave you graphs. They gave you graphs or diagrams in, in, in this passage. Think that if you get lost and you don't know where to start, go to the diagram. Start there. Because they're not going to go through all that hassle without making you answer questions based on it. So keep that in mind. And also keep in mind the note factor <laughs> that you that it, it is. 95% of the time going to be something that's going to help you get an answer correct. And that's why they put it in that section called note. OK, so question 34. So the food number moving dinosaur depicted in figure 2, where 20. Um, the stride length would be closest to. OK, so notice this. Mm, some people might call it a little trickery, that they're, they're saying the Freud number of the moving dinosaur depicted in figure 2. It makes you feel that you're going to answer the question based on figure 2. But why did they give you figure 1? <laughs> you know, that was a lot of 
you know, data that they put there. So it's unlikely that you're going to get away with not using figure one, you know, particularly in the first question. And and so uh, there we have it. So we and we're given 20 and L was 0.2 meters. Okay, so we have a suggestion on how to use that information. Okay, so we have um, okay. The Freud number is 20. Now, looking at the figure one. Now, remember they said the dinosaur in figure two, but that's not giving us the information that we need. But if we look at figure one, and uh, we look at the Freud number, which is part of the x-axis, if you have a Freud number of 20, what is the relative stride length? If you have a Freud number of 20. So we're given Freud number of 20 in the question. What is the relative stride length? Yeah. So the relative strand length is about six. You know, yeah, it's, it's about six. Uh, if you look at it um, uh, carefully, and during the exam, by the way, if you go through the exam and you don't take your pen, and you never use your pen as sort of like a ruler to look from one number to another number, then you've missed points. Because you, you absolutely have to do it on some questions. So you just put your pen down as a ruler, and you see where things line up. So it lines up at around 6. So we know that the relative stride length, which is S divided by L, is, um, is going to be 6. So we have the number 6 is equal to the relative stride, stride length, which is S divided by L. And we know that L is 2.2 2 meters, because we're given that. So this is equal to uh, S divided by 0 0.2. And of course, when, uh, okay, so, and this will give us meters as, as the stride. So to, to solve this, of course, you just multiply both sides by 0.2. And um, so that gives us 1.2. And that's equal to the stride in meters. Now, isn't that interesting? If you take your, if you take a ruler, you're not allowed a ruler during the exam. But if you take a ruler, that really lines up with six, and yet the answer, and the answer is clearly 1.2, and yet the answer provided is 1.4. So 34 is B. But what this does underline, I hope it does for you, is the idea of estimating. Sometimes you can be off you know, by a certain amount, and you're still OK. So uh, just keep that in mind. Because they could have put 1.2, and you would have been exactly correct. But they like to uh, put in a little bit of that ambiguity. So number 35, if L could be done, it's uh, 1.2 meters. <laughs> if it's 1.2 meters, it is 1.2 meters. We calculated 1.2 meters in the previous question. That should have been the answer. Anyway. At what speed would the dinosaur change from trotting to galloping? So we know that using the ferret as a mammalian model, <laughs> to use that as a model, we know that um, going from uh, galloping, uh, trotting to galloping, or galloping to trotting, uses a phone number of 2.5. So for question 35, we're starting with the number 2.5 as our Freud number. I think I've pronounced that three different ways. In French, it would be pronounced food. In English, I, I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so now that's equal to v squared over gl. So we have that equation from the passage, v squared over gl. We know what g is. g is gravity. It's 10. So anyway, I'll just write v squared over uh, GL. So that means that 2.5 times GL is going to be equal to V squared. So 2.5 times GL is the same thing as 2.5 times 10, so that's 25, times L, and L is given as 
1.2. So we have 25 times 1.2. So 25 times 1.2 would be, um, so that's 30. So you, you know 25 times 1 is 25. Uh, 25 times 0.2, well, 0.2 is like the fraction one-fifth. So one-fifth of 25 is 5. So it's 25 plus 5. Anyway, if there's some other better way you'd like to do it, but in, you can do it in your head to get to 30, or you can do it uh, step by step. So, so we have 30, and 30 is equal to v squared. So this is equal to uh, v v squared. So what we're really asking for is what is the square root of 30. So square root of 30. The square root of 30 uh, needs to be between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. And I choose those numbers because everyone knows what the square root of 25 is. It's 5. And everyone knows the square root of 36 is 6. So the square root of 30 is between 5 and 6. So we look to see if there's any answers between 5 and 6. And there is. It's answer choice D. So 35 is D. If there were two answers between 5 and 6, then you would take the numbers, uh, say, for example, 5.3 and 5.8 uh, or 5.7 or something like that. You would take those numbers and you'd multiply them by themselves, so 5.3 times 5.3, to see how close you get. And then you multiply the other one by itself to see how close you get. But here, it's very clear there's only one answer between 5 and 6. So then that's the correct answer. So we have that 34 was B as in Bob, and 35 was B as in Donald.